but in this case lumpectomy and axillary lymph node dissection was done. So, the stage was 2 B and you know that 1 stage 1 stage 2 A 2 B that is early invasive breast cancer. Since it is early invasive breast cancer, in this patient estrogen receptor was positive, HER2 new was negative. Now, another important finding that she was having positive surgical margins and undergo a second lumpectomy. Due to her young age at diagnosis, she was offered and consented to BRCA testing and her BRCA was negative following R2 about breast cancer in pregnancy. So, basic questions which you have to remember in breast cancer, you know that first investigation done in a suspected case of breast cancer, it is mammography. First investigation done in a suspected case of breast cancer in mammograph is mammography, but in pregnancy we do not perform mammography, we perform what ultrasound. So, first investigation done is ultrasound and investigation of choice for diagnosis and that is biopsy. Simple. In the management, you know that for early invasive breast cancer, we do not go for breast conservation surgery. So, we go for what? Simple mastectomy. We perform simple mastectomy and we perform axillary lymph node dissection. Right? And if patient is having locally advanced breast cancer, in cases of locally advanced breast cancer, we go for neoadjuvant chemotherapy plus MRM plus radiotherapy. See, in pregnancy, if you give chemotherapy in first trimester, it is going to increase the risk of congenital abnormality. That is why we give neoadjuvant chemotherapy after completion of first trimester. We perform MRM in second trimester and we give radiotherapy after delivery. So, these are basic important points. Now, see the options. Following are true about breast cancer in pregnancy. So, first occurs in one in every 3000 pregnant women. This is correct. This option is correct. This is the most common non-gynecological malignancy associated with pregnancy and you know breast cancer is the most common non-gynecological malignancy of pregnancy. And third, ductal carcinoma is the most common type, yes. Even in non-pregnant patient, the most common histological type is invasive ductal cancer or ductal carcinoma. So, what is the correct answer? First is correct, second is correct, third is correct. So, all of the above, correct answer is D, that is all of the above. Now, let us check, Aman Modi is correct, Rahul Mishra, Mishra is also correct. clear? So, most of you are correct. So, for this question, the correct answer is 4 that is all of the above. Aman is asking that sir, high yield for FMB December 2022 as well. Yes, it is very, very important and it will be means the concepts are very important for FMG exam also. Now, see the question number 2. A 40 years old female presented to OPD with complaints of a lump in left breast. Here, this female is having lump in the left breast, see size is 2 centimeter in upper outer quadrant. On further evaluation, patient was found to have early breast cancer and was planned breast conservation surgery. So, whenever we are planning breast conservation surgery, what are the treatment options? See, this is the breast. In this case, you can see this is the nipple, this is the areola, this is the lump. So, what are the options in breast conservation surgery? First, either you can excise the lump. If you just excise the lump, what is the name of this treatment? It is lumpectomy. If you take 1 centimeter margin around the lump and then excise the tumor, this is known as what? Wide local excision. And third option that we can excise the whole quadrant. And if we excise the whole quadrant, this is known as quadrantectomy, right? Quadrantectomy. So, here what you are noticing that most of the breast is conserved or preserved, only lump and some amount of normal tissue is removed around the tumor.
and that's why to prevent recurrence we have to give radiotherapy in the patients of breast conservation surgery clear now coming to the question adequate margin in breast conservation surgery is so you tell me what is the answer obviously it is 1 cm so correct answer for this question is a or option number 1 that is 1 cm so aman praveen R. K. Makeshna, Divya, Rohit Pandey, R. K. Makeshna, Harsh, Soni. Most of you are correct. Most of you replied that option 1 is correct. Okay? Now, question number 3. A 60 years old woman underwent mastectomy for breast cancer, see, 2 years back. Presents to emergency department. So, C is coming to the emergency department with headache, backache and frequent vomiting. You know, in breast cancer patient, if there is headache, what we suspect? We suspect the brain metastasis. There might be involvement of brain, backache, what? Bone metastasis. And you know, what is the most common site of metastasis? And that's lumbar vertebra. This is lumbar vertebra. And you know in lumbar vertebra, what kind of lesions are seen? Osteolytic as well as osteoblastic. Which one is more common? Osteolytic. Now, another very, very important finding you can see here. She is extremely thirsty and confused. You know that extreme thirst and confusion, these are the symptoms of what? Hypercalcemia. Okay. So, what are the pointers? or what are the points which are going to favor hypercalcemia that this patient is having backache. So, there is bone metastasis and which lesions are predominant osteolytic. So, because of this osteoclastic activity what happens there is hypercalcemia and if you are suspecting hypercalcemia what we have to go we have to go first for the serum calcium concentration. So, correct answer is serum calcium concentration and if you have to choose another option obviously it is 4 followed by option 1. Why? Because we are suspecting the bone metastasis also. So, first serum calcium concentration. Okay? Let us see. Nilesh, Ravi, Dr. Beniwal, Dr. Imran, Ranveer, Ifras, Jabin, Manish, Mosmi Meter, R. K. Makeshna, Divya Rani, Balram Sonkar, Saurav Kumar, Sinji Bhagat. Yes, so majority of you are correct. Most of you opted for option number 4 that is serum calcium concentration. So, majority of you are correct. Prahlad, Deepak Soni, you are also correct. Now, see the question number 4. A 67 years old female presented to emergency department and reported that one year ago, she had small lump in the breast. Over last two months of last two months, the breast had become much bigger, heavy, itchy and hot and there is cellulitis like appearance. Now, see if there is a malignancy and in the malignancy, the appearance is like inflammation like breast abscess. So, this malignancy is known as inflammatory breast cancer. Now, see the question. On clinical examination, left breast showed widespread erythema and intense edema with pewdy orange. It was augmented in size, enormous, ill-defined mass, areolar erosion, axillary pathological node involvement. Extensive investigations revealed, can you see here, inflammatory breast cancer with axillary metastasis and you know this inflammatory breast cancer looks like breast abscess. What is the other name? It is also known as mastitis carcinomatosa. This is mastitis carcinomatosa. What is the stage of inflammatory breast cancer? It is T4D and this corresponds to stage 3B. And you know that stage 3B, it is locally advanced breast cancer. And you already know what is the management of locally advanced breast cancer. We downstage the tumor. So, we give neoadjuvant chemotherapy. After that, we perform modified radical mastectomy and then we give radiotherapy. Simple. So, what is the correct answer? 
करेक्ट आंसर इज ए नियो एडजुवेंट कीमोथेरेपी प्लस एम आर एम प्लस रेडियोथेरेपी लेट्स चेक डॉक्टर आरती रश्मि प्रिया अरुथ ज्योति पीयूष रोहित पांडे इफ्रा सिंजनी भगत डॉक्टर इमरान ऑर्थो ओहायो ओनीचान अनिकेत पांडे अनिल सहगल अक्षी जैन रवि कुमार ऑल ऑफ यू आई शुड से अनंता कुमार पोशली डे गौतम माहेश्वरी दिव्या रानी डॉक्टर काजल मीना शिवाय सौरव कुमार मेजॉरिटी ऑफ यू ऑप्टेड फॉर द ऑप्शन नंबर वन एंड मोस्ट ऑफ यू आर करेक्ट नेहा यू आर ऑल्सो करेक्ट आशीष डॉक्टर बेनीवाल यू आर ऑल्सो करेक्ट सो करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन नंबर वन नाउ सी क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव अ थर्टी टू ईयर्स ओल्ड मैन प्रेजेंटेड विथ फिक्सड एंटीरियर नेक मार्क्स सो देर इज एंटीरियर नेक मार्क्स ऑन फिजिकल एग्जामिनेशन मास वॉज वेल डिमार्केटेड फिक्सड मेजर्ड अबाउट टू पॉइंट फाइव सेंटीमीटर इन लार्जेस्ट डायमीटर द रिजल्ट ऑफ थाइरॉयड फंक्शन टेस्ट वॉज नॉर्मल सो थाइरॉयड फंक्शन टेस्ट इट्स नॉर्मल एफ एन एस सी वॉज डन नाउ सी द फाइंडिंग ऑन एफ एन एस सी देर इज पैपिलरी प्रोजेक्शन सेकेंड ऑप्टिकली क्लियर न्यूक्लियाई एंड डिस्ट्रॉफिक कैल्सिफिकेशन यू नो दिस ऑप्टिकली क्लियर न्यूक्लियाई इज ऑल्सो नोन एज वॉट और फन एनी आई न्यूक्लियाई दिस इज और फन एनी आई न्यूक्लियाई एंड यू नो डिस्ट्रॉफिक कैल्सिफिकेशन वॉट्स द नेम ऑफ दीज बॉडीज दीज आर नोन एज सैमोमा बॉडीज नेम ऑफ दीज बॉडीज सैमोमा बॉडीज क्लियर सो पैपिलरी प्रोजेक्शन आर्फन एनी आई न्यूक्लियाई सेमोमा बॉडीज ऑब्वियसली वॉट्स द डायग्नोसिस हेयर सो द डायग्नोसिस इज पैपिलरी कार्सिनोमा द डायग्नोसिस इज पैपिलरी कार्सिनोमा एंड इफ इट इज पैपिलरी कार्सिनोमा ऑब्वियसली वी विल गो फॉर टोटल थारोडेक्टोमी यू नो दैट इन थारॉयड मैलिग्नेंसी द मोस्ट कॉमनली इन्वॉल्व लिम्फ नोड इज वॉट लेवल सिक्स दैट इज सेंट्रल और एंटीरियर कंपार्टमेंटल एंड दैट्स वाई वॉट इज द ट्रीटमेंट वी परफॉर्म टोटल थारोडेक्टमी प्लस रिमूवल ऑफ इनलार्ज सेंट्रल ग्रुप ऑफ लिम्फ नोड एंड यू नो दैट इन पैपिलरी कार्सिनोमा थारॉयड मोस्ट कॉमन रूट ऑफ स्प्रेड इट इज लिम्फैटिक सो इफ अ लिम्फ नोड इज इन्वॉल्व ऑन दैट साइड वी हैव टू परफॉर्म इप्सी लैटरल मॉडिफाइड रेडिकल नेक डिसेक्शन क्लियर सो हेमी थारोडेक्टमी दिस इज इन करेक्ट सब टोटल थारोडेक्टमी इन करेक्ट हेमी थारोडेक्टमी इन करेक्ट वी परफॉर्म टोटल थारोडेक्टमी प्लस रिमूवल ऑफ इन लार्ज ग्रुप ऑफ लिम्फ नोट प्लस माइनस इप्सी लैटरल एम आर एन डी सो करेक्ट एंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन नंबर थ्री लेट्स चेक रणवीर सिंह डॉक्टर आरती यश जांगीर हरीश विनो ग्लोबे सौरभ शिवाय मोहम्मद राशिद रणवीर मनीष भट्ट All of you are correct. Everybody is correct for this particular question. Jerry is also correct. All of you, Moh, Mohabul Haq, clear. All of you are correct for this particular question. Question number five. Now see the next question. Question number six is very very important. It was asked similar question was asked many times in many other exams. See, two hours after total thyroidectomy. For thyrotoxicosis, young woman rapidly becomes agitated, complains of increasing difficulty in breathing. She is having respiratory distress. Pulse rate rises. BP falls to ninety by sixty. Her neck is found to be tensely swollen beneath the stitches. Most appropriate management in this case would be: first, you tell me what is the diagnosis. Tensely swollen. yes neck was tensely swollen beneath the stitches so you know there is one of the complication of thyroidectomy that is hemorrhage it is because of bleeding from muscular artery or slippage of ligature from superior thyroid vessels and because of this there is massive bleeding and blood is collected beneath the sutures or stitches and it is going to compress the trachea this kind of hematoma is known as tension hematoma it's tension hematoma and it's an emergency 
the moment you are going to realize that patient is having all these findings suggestive of tension hematoma immediately release the tension so what you do we remove the say the sutures or stitches and immediately shift the patient to ot so first remove the sutures so intranasal oxygen no passing an endotracheal tube in the ward no removing sutures from all layers in the ward and evacuation of hematoma correct immediate transfer of the patient to operation theater for tracheostomy no we are not going for tracheostomy we are just going to explore the wound after opening the suture if a bleeding vessel is there we are going to ligate it we put a drain we make sure that there is no bleeding means we control the hemostasis so correct answer for this question is option number 3 removing sutures from all the layers and evacuation of hematoma let's see Anup, Harish, Saurav Kumar, Mohammad Rashid, Divya Reddy, Shivai, Jitin Singla, Ritesh Chauhan, Akshi Jain, Divya Reddy, all of you are correct. Sayan Mandal, also correct. So, all of you are correct. All of you mark the option number 3. Very good. Ranveer Singh, Mohammad Rashid, Gautam Maheshwari. Divya Reddy, all of you are correct. Most of you marked option number 3 and that's correct. It was asked many times in exam. Now see the next question. Question number 7. A 35 years old male patient who is known case of psychiatric illness was brought in by his mother with complaints of swelling in the neck region with no other associated complaint. On examination, a nodule in the left lobe of the thyroid was noted. So, in the left lobe of thyroid, there is a nodule. Ultrasound shows non-cystic solid mass. Patient was further evaluated with radionuclide scan and which showed a cold nodule. So, here this patient is having cold nodule in one of the lobe. And you know, how much is the risk of malignancy in cold nodule? It's very high. The risk of malignancy is 17 to 20 percent. If we see hot nodule, in hot nodule, the risk of malignancy is 1 to 3 percent. So, whenever there is a cold nodule, we have to go for hemithyroidectomy. If there is a hot nodule, it also takes radioactive iodine. So, we can go for hemithyroidectomy as well as we can go for radioactive iodine ablation. Clear? So, in this question, patient is having cold nodule. So, correct answer for this question is option number 2. Clear? So, option number 2, hemithyroidectomy. Now, see, Kajal Meena, Dr. Beniwal, Divya Rani, Anuj Sharma, Anup, Sayan Mandal, Pradeep Gund, Manish Bhatt, Ranveer, Deepak Kothi, Bhavin Tambolia, Deepak Suthar, Ranveer Singh, Dr. P. K. Singh is also there, Arud Jetty, Divya Reddy, and there is Salimayam, Smriti, Anup. Majority of you are correct. Majority of you are correct. Right? Option number 2 is correct. Now, see the question number 8. A 25 years old male patient with family history very, very important, family history of hyperparathyroidism was brought to OPD with complaints of loin pain. If a patient is having hyperparathyroidism, there is hypercalcemia, clear? And because of this hypercalcemia, there is increased risk of kidney stone. So, because of this kidney stone, there is loin pain. On evaluation, here you can see multiple renal calculi were noted in both kidneys. Effect of hypercalcemia, serum calcium, PTH level, urine VMA levels and serum prolactin level were found to be elevated. So, see there is increased PTH suggestive of hyperparathyroidism. In hyperparathyroidism, there is increased serum calcium and you can see prolactin is also elevated. Prolactin is also elevated. It means this patient must be having what? Prolactinoma something like that. Which of the following organs was first affected in, in this patient? 
So, if you see the picture, it gives you the hint of one syndrome, multiple endocrine neoplasia, MEN1. And you know that in MEN1, what are the manifestations? There is hyperparathyroidism, there is neuroendocrine tumors of pancreas, and what? Pituitary tumor, and which one? Most commonly prolactinoma. Out of these three, the first organ affected or involved is what? That is parathyroid and the earliest biochemical abnormality detect detected that is hypercalcemia. So, correct answer for this question is A, parathyroid. Clear? Now, let us see. Muhammad Talha, Gajala Amir, Anush Sharma, Harish P. V. Anshu Sharma, Anup Manish Bhatt, Sayan Mandal, Ranveer Singh, Aruth Jyothi, Dr. P. K. Singh, Muhammad Rashid, very good Muhammad Rashid, you know, it is men 1, Anup, Jitin Singla, Dr. Beniwal, Muhammad Mohabbul Haq, Naveen Venkatappa, Sinji Bhagat, Naujat, Ishika Nayak, Anand Kumar Berua, Hemant Raj, Harshita Male, Dr. Vikram 07, all of you are correct, all of you. Okay, VMA is also raised in which conditions whenever a patient is having pheochromocytoma, clear? Or patients in which there is catecholamine producing tumors, right? GTX preet. So, all of you are correct. So, correct answer for this question is option number 1. Question number 9. A 45 years old female came to the OPD with complaints of pain and tenderness. Where is that? In right hypochondrium. Ultrasound revealed inflamed gallbladder with multiple stones, largest one measuring 1 centimeter in diameter. Patient was planned for laparoscopic cholecystectomy and taken up for surgery. Contraindications to laparoscopic cholecystectomy. You know that coagulopathy, it is an absolute contraindication. And obstructive pulmonary disease, end stage liver disease, these are relative contraindications. Clear? So, what is the correct answer? Correct answer is option number 4. See the list because it's important. What are the contraindications of lab coli? Absolute and relative. The absolute contraindication is, is if patient is not able to tolerate general anesthesia or patients are having refractory coagulopathy or patient is having carcinoma gallbladder. And relative contraindications, patients who are having diffuse peritonitis, if there is previous abdominal surgery and extensive adhesions are there, patients who are having severe cardiopulmonary disease, morbid obesity, pregnancy, cholangitis, cirrhosis and portal hypertension and cholecystoenteric fistula. So, in the options you can see this one, this one, these are relative and refractory coagulopathy, this is absolute contraindication. So, correct answer for this question is option number 4. Let us see. I think majority of you are correct. Moham Smriti, Naveen, Venkatappa, Dr. Chandresh Singh, Yakshik Patel, Dr. Aarti, Jugal Panchal, Anush Sharma, Piyush, Dr. Imran, Rishi Maurya, Poshali Day, Hemant Raj, Mohammad Rashid, Agni Singh, Chitara, Arita Chakrabarti, Dr. P. K. Singh, Sabha Kosar, Anup says that we sir please explain again. Okay, Anup, I am explaining. It is easy. See, there are absolute contraindications and there are relative contraindications for cars for lap cholecystectomy. If patient is not able to tolerate general anesthesia, obviously you cannot create pneumoperitoneum, you cannot perform the surgery. Second, if patient is having refractory coagulopathy, because of that there is increased chances of bleeding. And you know, in laparoscopic surgery, we have limited options to control the bleeding. And if patient is having carcinoma gallbladder, there are increased risk of what spread, especially at the port site. And in relative contraindications, if a patient is having severe cardiopulmonary disease because you are creating pneumoperitoneum, so in patients who are having severe cardiopulmonary disease, they are not able to tolerate. And cirrhosis and portal hypertension, what is the problem? There is venous collaterals, because of that there is increased risk of bleeding.
So, all these are absolute this is refractory coagulopathy absolute contraindication these two are relative contraindications ok. Now, let us see again majority of then how will we treat yes we go for open cholecystectomy if lab cholecystectomy is contraindicated obviously we go for open cholecystectomy Dr. Benival you are correct Dr. Amulia we go for open cholecystectomy clear in open cholecystectomy we have freedom we can easily control the bleeding. Question number 10 a female 61 years old with history of very very important finding autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease since 2010 was admitted with 2 months history of abdominal discomfort and rapidly progressing jaundice following nausea and weight loss. So, two important points ADPKD there is abdominal discomfort and there is jaundice it means what involvement of liver is there liver function test showed picture of obstructive jaundice hepatitis virus negative MRCP revealed bilobar polycystic liver with cyst at porta hepatis causing marked narrowing at the bifurcation of common hepatic duct. There is mild dilatation of intrahepatic right bile duct treatment option for above patient shed include all except first important point that this patient is having autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Second important point in this patient there is involvement of liver and in liver also you noticed there are multiple cysts. So, what is most common extra renal manifestation of ADPKD this is polycystic liver disease polycystic liver disease ok. In majority of cases we give somatostatin analog in the form of medical management, but if there are certain complications in those cases we go for surgical management like if the last cyst is there we just go for fenestration of cyst or we go for deroofing of the cyst or if one segment is affected causing complication we go for hepatic resection clear or we can offer the patient liver transplantation. So, see the options treatment option for the above patient should include all except deroofing of cyst we do hepatic resections we do liver transplantation we do but we do not go for excision of cyst. So, correct answer for this question is option number 2 ok here here Gautam Maheshwari is correct Kavan Manek is correct majority of you Piyush Mansingani is correct majority of you marked option number 4 Aarti Deep Suthar Smriti Heri Dube Ananta Kumar Ravi Kumar ok Dr. Vikram 7 Hari Shivai yes Anup you are very very you are mentioning very important thing what except is important. So, whenever you are reading any question read the last term whether except is mentioned or not. Excision of cyst can cause complication yes rather than excising the cyst because you are not going multiple cyst are there. So, you are not supposed to excise one cyst if a segment is responsible for complication we are going to resect that segment ok. So, please repeat answer sir ok Benival I am repeating let me discuss the treatment also first. In polycystic liver disease we discussed that we give somatostatin analog like octreotide why because sometimes there is secretions from the cyst it is going to decrease that. But if patient is having severe symptoms there are large cyst or complication in that case what you can do you can perform percutaneous aspiration and you can inject the sclerosing agent. You can go for cyst fenetration or deroofing of the cyst or you can go for hepatic resection and any patient who is having progressive liver disease in that case we go and can go for orthotopic liver transplantation clear. So, only excision of cyst is not done otherwise we perform deroofing hepatic resection liver transplantation. So, correct answer for this question is option number 2 let us see again how many of you are correct.
Anant Kumar Bura is asking, in kidney we don't de-roof, then why here it is correct? See, what happens in kidney when there is ADPKD in autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, initially surgeons were performing de-roofing. They were thinking that because of cyst there are complications. But what is the problem? De-roofing is not going to help because ultimately patient develops CRF chronic renal failure and we go for renal transplantation. Here, because of cyst, sometimes there is compression of bile duct and patient is having jaundice. So, in such cases, if there is compression of bile duct leading to jaundice, obviously the cyst is responsible, then you have to perform the de-roofing. That is why we are performing it. Dr. Imran is saying that we perform de-roofing in ADPKD, we do, but this is not the treatment of choice and it is not very helpful also. Imran, that is Rovzing's operation, you are correct, but we are not performing it frequently. The treatment of choice is liver transplantation. Okay. Now, next question. Question number 11. A 5 years old female came to OPD with complaints of generalized pruritus, okay. fatigue and jaundice. Liver function test revealed elevated bilirubin and ALP. On further evaluation, patient was diagnosed as a case of primary biliary cirrhosis, most common symptom. You know, primary biliary cirrhosis is an autoimmune disorder and that is why it is more common in females. There is progressive destruction of only intrahepatic bile duct. And what is the most common symptom? That is fatigue followed by pruritus. It means in these patients, pruritus and fatigue, these are the most characteristic symptom. The most common is fatigue and in later stages, patient is going to notice what? Jaundice. So, here pruritus precedes jaundice and pruritus is most bothersome in evening. Clear? So, see the question, most common symptom in primary biliary cirrhosis. It is not the jaundice, it is late it is not melanosis, it is not vomiting, it is fatigue, it is not there in the option. So, you mark pruritus, clear? So, pruritus and fatigue, these are the most characteristic symptoms and obviously, there is involvement of intrahepatic bile duct. So, in such patients, we go for liver transplantation. You know this simple concept, any patient in whom there is involvement of intrahepatic bile duct we cannot repair intrahepatic bile duct. So, if intrahepatic bile duct is diseased, we go for liver transplantation. So, here the correct answer is option number 2. Let us check how many of you mark the correct answer. Yes, almost everybody, almost Kalpana, Sayan Mandal, Poshali Day, Anoop, Irfa Zabin, Isha Nayak, Maha Dilai, Ifra Zabin, Kartik Ali Azad, Pankaj Sharma, Shivai, Shinji Bhagat, Heri Dube, Muhammad Rashid, Mani Kumari Kala, almost everybody, Dr. Khal, uh, Akhil, Dr. Imran, very good Dr. Imran, anti-mitochondrial and autoantibodies are also there, Anup is also correct, clear? So, here itching or pruritus, that is the correct answer. Now, see question number 12. A 33 years old what chronic alcoholic female presented with complaints of pain in epigastrium and multiple episodes of vomiting. Patient was admitted and after extensive evaluation diagnosed as a case of chronic pancreatitis. She is having chronic pancreatitis. Patient had severe abdominal pain and did not resolve on medical therapy to get better pain relief in case of chronic pancreatitis which nerve should be blocked. See, in chronic pancreatitis there are three problems. First, these patients have exocrine insufficiency. Second, these patients have endocrine insufficiency. And third, these patients have chronic pain. clear? For exocrine insufficiency, you know what we give pancreatic enzyme supplements, enteric coated pancreatic enzyme supplements. For 
Endocrine insufficiency means the patient is having diabetes mellitus, what we give? Insulin. And whenever patient is having chronic pain, we start with analgesics first. Start with analgesics first. Clear? And here you can notice that it did not resolve on medical therapy. So, we give NSAIDs, we give opiates. NSAID that is metamazole, opiate that is buprenorphine. After analgesics also, if there is no improvement, we go for what ERCP with stenting. Why? Because it is said that in chronic pancreatitis, ductal hypertension is responsible for pain. So, if ductal hypertension is responsible for pain, we relieve the obstruction by ERCP and stenting. And if there is stone, we remove the stone. After that also, if there is no improvement, we go for celiac ganglia block because this is the ganglia which supplies pancreas and even after that if there is no improvement we go for surgery clear so which nerve should be blocked tell me correct answer is option number a celiac ganglia so for this we go for celiac ganglia block let's check how many of you mark the correct answer almost everyone almost Karthik, Vikram, Himanshi, C. B. Nath, Amulya, Agni Singh, Sunil Chaudhary, Divesh Sharma, Khalid Ansari, Rohit Fan, Neha Khan, Anshul Sharma, Sayan Mandal, Dr. Akhil, Dr. Benival, Ali Azad, Jivita Asar, Dr. Benival, Mani Kumari Kala, Bhavin Tambolia, Utkarsh, Dr. P. K. Singh, yes, almost partially day, Bhavin Tambolia, Neha Yadav, Pankaj Sharma, almost everyone. Clear? So, correct answer for this question is option number 1. Question number 13, very, very easy. This kind of question was asked many times in FMG, in NEET PG, in INICT. 40 years old, obese male, obese male came to OPD with complaints of heartburn. See, heartburn and regurgitation. Tell me what is the symptom? Symptom of which disease? Regurgitation is more after eating spicy foods. Based on the symptoms, patient was suspected to have GERD. Tell me gold standard investigation for diagnosis of GERD. I know that almost all of you know the correct answer. Tell me. So, obviously, the gold standard is what? 24 hours ambulatory pH monitoring. This is for GERD. For which condition in esophagus we perform barium swallow, Zenkers diverticulum and hiatus hernia, endoscopy plus biopsy for carcinoma esophagus and Barrett's and all of you know that we perform manometry for motility disorders. Tell me the names. Tell me the names of motility disorders, achalasia cardia, diffuse esophageal spasm and nutcrackers esophagus. Clear? So, what is the correct answer for this question? For question number 13, option number 3 is correct. Let us see how many of you, almost everybody, almost, yes, Piyush Mansingni, Ifra Zabin, Shivam Rajput, Deepak Maurya, Travel Travel, Divesh Sharma, Sidra Alam, Suni Langadi, Dr. Dinesh Jandu, Ananta Kumar, Siddhi, Neha, Poshli Day, almost everyone, Rohit Fan, Lakshya Kumar, Anu Prishi Maurya, Nikita, Neha Yadav, Mani Kumar, Ali Azad, almost everyone, Ishika, Smriti, Sayan Mandal, almost everyone is correct. Clear? So, correct answer for this question is option number 3. Very good. Now, question number 14, a 68 years old woman has been diagnosed with benign ulcer on the greater curvature, greater curvature, chances are there that on greater curvature the ulcers are malignant, 5 centimeter proximal to antrum, after 3 months of standard medical therapy, continues to have goic positive stool, it means what, there is occult bleeding. That is why there is goic positive stools, anemia because of occult bleeding, abdominal pain, failure of the ulcer to heal. Ulcer is not healing, patient is having pain, anemia is there, 
evidence of bleeding in the stool, biopsies, gastric ulcer have not identified, biopsies of the gastric ulcer have not identified a malignancy, the next step in the management. Now here, there is occult bleeding, ulcer is not healing, so in this case obviously we will go for what? We will go for surgery. What kind of surgery? We have two options. We can go for distal gastrectomy or subtotal gastrectomy. So, in this patient, since patient is having bleeding and here is the malignancy, see malignancy, so we perform distal gastrectomy. And after that, we can go for gastroduodenostomy means this part is removed, then this part is left and then you perform the anastomosis with duodenum. You tell me what is the name of this Billroth surgery? This is Bill Roth 1. Clear? So, what we are doing? We are doing partial gastric resection. See the options one by one. Treatment of anemia and repeat all studies in 6 weeks. No. Why? Because this ulcer is there and it is not healing. Patient is symptomatic. Endoscopy and bipolar electrocautery or laser photocoagulation for gastric ulcer. We are not performing endoscopic treatment for gastric ulcer. Admission of the patient, TPN, treatment of the anemia and endoscopic therapy. No, we have to perform surgery. What? Surgical intervention including partial gastric resection. So, correct answer is option number 4. So, option number 4 is correct. Okay, let us check how many of you mark the correct answer. Ashish Darji, Bhavin Tambolia, Dr. Akhil Ali Azad, Smriti, Dr. Vikram, Ishika Nayak, Mithu Kumar, Dr. B. D. S. Priyanka Parmar, Vivek Yadav, Kajal Meena, Mani Kumari Kalla, Bakul Gupta, Deepak Maurya, Kuldeep Chaudhary, Ashish Darji, almost everyone, Dr. Pika, Devansh Gautam, Ifra Zabin, Pankaj Sharma, Rahil Alam, Travel Travel, Divesh Sharma, yes, Travel Travel, surgery is very easy subject, I am telling you. I am telling you it is very, very easy subject, do not have any kind of phobia for surgery. Once you read it, then you will realize and for revision, there is rapid revision, do not have any kind of fear for surgery, right. If any topic in which you have difficulty, watch the main videos. And after that for revision, you have gold standard revision, source rapid revision, do not have any kind of fear for surgery and do not leave this subject. Prava B says, biopsy says non-malignant, it is fine, it is non-malignant, yes, it is an ulcer which is not healing and if it is gastric ulcer, for gastric ulcer generally what is the treatment? We go for surgery if it is not healing after medical management, okay. So, uh, most of you were correct, correct answer is option number 4. Now, question number 15, 55 years old male was brought to the casualty with complaints of severe abdominal pain, mid abdominal distension, he gives history of coronary artery disease. Patient was further evaluated, CT angiogram was done which shows feature, features consistent with occlusion of superior mesenteric artery there is occlusion of superior mesenteric artery. Patient was diagnosed to have acute mesenteric ischemia. Ischemia of which vessel would cause least damage? Two, three basic questions. See, GIT develops from foregut, midgut and hindgut. Okay? Foregut is from cricopharynx till two-third of, till second part of duodenum. Midgut from second part of duodenum till two-third of transverse colon and hindgut one third of transverse colon till anorectal junction. You know the arterial supply, foregut, celiac artery or celiac trunk, midgut, superior mesenteric artery and hindgut, inferior mesenteric artery. Now, see the diagram. Here you can see that this is the superior mesenteric artery, clear? And this is the middle colic. This middle colic is having this right branch and this is the left branch. Now, you can see this is marginal artery of Drummond. Yes, here this is inferior mesenteric artery, so this marginal artery of Dumond, it is giving the supply to the left colon. So, even if this middle, 
even if this inferior mesentic artery is occluded, what? It is receiving the supply, right? So, even if the inferior mesentic artery is occluded, there is minimal damage, minimal damage. So, see the question, renal artery, no, superior mesentic artery, no, it is already involved, celiac trunk, no, what? It is inferior mesentic artery. So, correct answer for this question is option number 3. Let us see how many of you mark the correct answer because this question was asked previously also in All India. Yes, almost everyone, Rahil Alam, Satish Kumar, Revant Reddy, Suman Singh, Singh, Nikita Nara, Rohil Alam, Dr. Pika, Shyam, Kostav, Bhardwaj, Khushbu, Khedar, Satish Kumar, Dr. D.S., Vishwaraj Singh, Rana, Neha, Tahir Muhammad, R.V. Kumar, Mithu Kumar, Ali Azad, Rahil Alam, almost everyone, almost everyone. Harish, Kajal Meena, Siddharth, Dr. Vikram 07, Anugrah Sharma, Devansh Gautam, Dr. DMC, Smriti, Shubham Sharma, Irfra Zabin, almost everyone is correct. So, correct answer for this question is option number 3. Now, see question number 17. A 40 years old male was diagnosed as a case of colorectal cancer. Patient gives positive family history. There is positive family history of colorectal car carcinoma. Patient was tested and found to have Lynch syndrome. Most common, this was a question in All India, mismatch repair gene mutation in HNPCC. You know, this HNPCC is also known as Lynch syndrome. This is further divided into Lynch 1 and Lynch 2. In Lynch 1, there is colorectal cancer only and in Lynch 2, there is colorectal cancer plus extra intestinal malignancy, extra intestinal malignancy, clear? And which extra intestinal malignancy? Endometrial followed by gastric followed by ovarian, how to remember ego? Endometrial followed by gastric followed by ovarian. In Lynch syndrome or HNPCC, total 7 genes are responsible for more than 90 percent cases. There is involvement of HMLH1 and HMSH2. These two genes are responsible for 90 percent cases. So, tell me what is the correct answer? Option number 1, HMSH2 and HMLH1. This is the most common mismatch re mismatch repair gene mutation in HNPCC. Clear? Correct answer is option number 1. Let us see how many of you are correct. Almost everyone, Rohit, Zebi, Ifra Zabin, Pradeep, Gun, Dr. D.S., Imran Ortho, Heri Dube, Satish Kumar, Nikita Nara, Tojo Beni, Muskan, Khushbu Khedar, Dr. D.S., Shyam, Dr. Pika, Sri Shrestha, Deepak Morya, Prava B, Ali Azad, Bhojmanian, Bakul Gupta, Arsha Chaudhary, Vabha Varma, Dr. Pika, Divesh Sharma, Samarth Parma, Ritu Gupta, Slayer Gaming, Dukat, almost everyone is correct. So, correct answer for this question is option number 1. Now, question number 18. A 31 year old male presents with complaints of lower abdominal pain and blood in stools. Colonoscopy revealed focal aphthous ulceration and polypoid mucus changes and adjacent areas of normal appearing mucosa. So, whenever there are polypoid mucus changes with normal appearance of surrounding mucosa, this is having what kind of appearance? This is cobblestone appearance or we call it cobblestone mucosa. Two problems, cobblestone mucosa, after ulceration, patient is having lower abdominal pain, blood in stools. So, tell me what you are thinking. You are thinking about inflammatory bowel disease. Tell me which condition you are thinking about. These are the characteristic features of what? Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease. And this question was asked many times in exam that in Crohn's disease, what kind of mutation is there? Nod 2 
CARD15 mutation. There is NOD2 CARD15 gene mutation. How it looks like? Here you can see. You can see that these are the after sulceration which are seen. And here, this kind of appearance that is known as what? Cobblestone appearance. So, after sulceration, cobblestone appearance seen in Crohn's and NOD2 CARD15 gene mutation is seen in Crohn's. Correct answer for this question is option number 1. Let us see <coughs> how many of you marked it correctly. Utkash, Dr. Arti, Bhakul Gupta, Shivai, Deepak Maurya, Harry Dube, Vabha Verma, Sayan Mandal, Kostav Dokat, Karthik, Abu Sufyan Khan, Ifra Zabin, Bhavin Tambolia, Ritu Gupta, Mumtaz Khan, Dr. Pika. Yes, almost everybody is correct. Correct answer is option number 1. Question number 19. A 30-years-old male, Mr. Raghu, presented to the OPD with complaints of, can you see, bleeding PR. <coughs> he is a known case of ulcerative colitis on medical treatment. He failed to respond med to medical treatment and that is why taken up for elective surgery and restorative proctocolectomy with ileal pouch anal anastomosis was done most common complication associated with this procedure. So, what we do have a look. This is the colon, clear? This is the colon, this is the rectum, this is the anus. What we do in this case? In this case, we perform total proctocolectomy. This much part is removed. So, we are left with what? Anal canal and we are left with ileum. We make a pouch of ileum and perform the anastomosis. How you perform the anastomosis like this? So, you can see these are the pouches. Which pouch is most commonly used? J shaped pouch. So, this is ileal pouch and you perform the anastomosis. So, name of surgery total proctocolectomy plus ileal pouch anal anastomosis. Simple. This is inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis is inflammatory bowel disease. So, in this case there is inflammation, inflammation of what pouch? So, after surgery if inflammation of pouch occurs that is known as pouchitis. Second, it is a kind of pelvic surgery and in that there is risk of adhesion and because of adhesion there is adhesive intestinal obstruction. So, what happens in such patients? Pouchitis is seen in 33 percent patients and small bowel obstruction 25 percent. Tick. Now, see the options. Most common complication associated with this procedure, small bowel obstruction, no. Pouchitis 25 percent, this is 33 percent. Pelvic abscess, sepsis leak can be seen, but the most common complication is pouchitis. It is a repeat question. Let us see how many of you marked correct answer. Siddhi Sharma, Abhishek Laler, Jitin Sharma, Dr. DMC, Tana Mewada, Utkar Shukla, Bakul Gupta, Atharv Chandole, Mithu Kumar, Ali Azad, Dr. P. K. Singh, Dr. P. K. Ifra Zabin, Kajal Meena, almost everyone, Manish Nayak. All of you marked option number 2, that is correct answer, correct. Question number 20. 29 years old female who was diagnosed to have acute appendicitis was planned for emergency appendectomy. Patient was very concerned about scar. Female patient is there. She is concerned about the scar. Incision that is preferred for appendectomy for better cosmetic approach. See the incisions of appendectomy. Very easy to understand. Here you can see this is anterior superior ilex spine. This is umbilicus. You join it. This is known as spino umbilical line. On this, there is a point known as McBurney's point, which is the most tender point in acute appendicitis. And you know, McBurney's point corresponds to base of appendix. I am giving an incision centered at McBurney's point, perpendicular to spinal umbilical line. This is known as McBurney's incision. McBurney's incision, also known as MacArthur incision, also known as grid iron incision. This is muscle splitting incision, but sometimes we have to divide the conjoint tendon. 
you cut the conjoint tendon, extend the incision upward and laterally, this is known as Rutherford Morrison. But Rutherford Morrison is muscle cutting incision, that is why scar is not good. Third incision, we join midpoint of clavicle to midpoint of inguinal ligament. You join it and on this line 2 centimeter below umbilicus, we are placing a transverse incision. 2 centimeter below umbilicus, this is known as Lange incision. This is most preferred, cosmetically better. This is also known as modified McBurney's incision, bikini incision, Rocky Davis incision because cosmetically it is better. So, what is the correct answer? See, Rutherford Morrison, no, it is muscle cutting incision, scar is not good, Lange incision correct, MacArthur is also known as McBurney's incision, the in scar of Lange incision is better than McBurney, MacArthur, facial incision it is given for cesarean. So, this is not done, correct answer for this question is option number 2. Option number 2, and very good, almost everybody is correct. Divesh Sharma, Kajal Meena, Priyanka Parmar, Neha Yadav, Anoop, Manish Nayak, Ali Azad, Dr. Lit, Pradeep Gund, Anush Sharma, almost everybody is correct. Vaibhav, Sayan Mandal, Kajal Meena, almost everyone. So, these uh, were three 20 questions which were very, very important. It, these kind of questions were asked frequently in exams. If you want to ask anything related to this topic, please message. And see, we have uploaded the list of important topics because we are constantly receiving this kind of query from most of the students that, sir, what are the important topics of surgery which are asked in exam? We uploaded the video in which all topics which were asked in FMG, NEET, PG, INI, CT, AIMS are mentioned along with the year, along with the year. Clear? Thank you, Anoop. Thank you very much. Thank you. Clear? So, please watch that video also because then it will give you an insight that which topics are important. So, it was wonderful session with you all. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.